गुड आफ्टरनून सो अवर नेक्स्ट सेशन इज रिलेटेड टू इंडस्ट्रीज यू नो सम स्टूडेंट्स दे हैव कन्फ्यूजन वेन दे स्टार्ट स्टडिंग इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक्स यू नो सम स्टूडेंट्स इवन हैव आस्क मी वॉट इज वॉट इज रिलेवेंस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक्स टू इंडस्ट्री एंड इवन इन वन ऑफ द अवर एम टेक बैचेस पॉवर सिस्टम बैच when in the first month when they joined and they i started interacting with them on fem and all that electromagnetics one even mtech student who joined in our power group he asked what is the relation between electromagnetics and power power engineering so that is the kind of uh, you know uh, apathy i would should say in some of the students mind so i thought you know i'll keep one session uh, although of course you need not have to be told about the relevance of electromagnetics to industry but at the same time i thought i'll keep one session on relevance of you know electromagnetics to industry and uh, we have two you know uh, presenters and uh, professor baskaran muldidagan has kindly agreed to chair this session he is my colleague in electrical department and he works in the area of uh, theoretical uh, nano electronics and spintronics so over to baskaran muldidagan for chairing this session thank you very much uh, professor kulkarni uh, so thank you for inviting me over for this session so the first talk is by dr ravindra bide from ge research and his topic of today's talk is applied electromagnetics and industrial perspective the title is slightly changed from what is written in the uh, schedule so a little bit about him dr ravindra bide is a senior member of ieee completed his phd in electrical engineering from iit bombay in 2010 with specialization in design and analysis of special transformers using computational electromagnetics he joined electromagnetic systems lab g global research in 2010 as a research engineer where he played the key roles in design and development of interior permanent magnetic magnet generators novel transformer topologies variable reactors and electromagnetic actuators Currently Dr Bide is a lead engineer in the electromagnetic systems lab driving the research in design and design of electrical machines transformers and circuit breakers his research expertise is in the field of electromagnetic design and analysis of power devices Dr Bide also works as in house faculty teaching electromagnetics and electrical machines to GE Technol India Technology Center Apart from this in-house development he also coordinates and contributes in a course at IIT Delhi every year. He is a recipient of 5 patents and author of 11 publications. Dr. Ravindra Bide is also a reviewer of several international journals like IEEE journals on power delivery, magnetics and IEEE electric power applications. So I would like to invite Dr. Bide over for his talk. Thank you. Can you say Yeah, I'm sorry about the uh, that eleventh hour change in 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 the in, the, in my title because the title was given by sir was very elaborative and I cannot talk so much on in G electromagnetics. So I restricted myself in my lab where we maximum work on work in uh, electromagnetics and try. We'll try to try to cover uh, two things here. One, how we can relate basics of uh, electromagnetics to actual industrial problems. Plus, uh, what I experience when I take the responsibilities of teaching employees who Have I mean who have come after so many years of the gaps in academics? It will be difficult to them to explain electromagnetics without any mathematics. So that is a big challenge because one of my friends says your electromagnetics always having at least two integrals, two sines of uh, integrals, right? So I mean how to avoid that and how to make it more kind of uh, uh, simpler and be on very much conceptual wise where we where they can relate their own fields, for example locomotives or subsea. where they can feel the fields feel the fields right so uh, this is the third session where uh, the topic is innovations in industry right so innovation has a mark of dollar of value always in when you talk in industry because any idea you propose first question comes how much dollar i have to spend on this what is the cost implication of this so your innovation always have has that kind of challenge when you when you talk about some kind of low hanging fruits uh, in any industry 
So what Thomas Edison said that uh, what first we identify what is the market, what is the commercial team is doing, what is the market value of this need, what the world needs in short, and then let's go ahead and invent it. So that's kind of uh, typical, uh, I, I would say, quote on uh, industrial research uh, being driven. Right, so as I said, the fields can be like from system turbines to gas turbines, and that can be also power systems, energy management, transformers, motors, generators, going back to LEDs, lighting, right? It can also have uh, aviation engines, healthcare. So all these fields are uh, surviving only on electromagnetics per se, right? Even you take the small example of healthcare, MRI is a big, is a novel piece of electromagnetics with a lot of uh, superconducting magnets, cryocooling technologies, right? So these kind of, uh, they are example, and when we actually work in that field, we realize, well, this is not like, like rocket science. Whatever we learn, we are going to apply. So just want to, I want to just humble, try to help you to connect the dots, what you learn and what we can uh, implement in actual practice. Uh, I am from GE Research, where we located to, uh, in Bangalore, apart from my other five centers. Right, so applied uh, electromagnetics, right? So, uh, innovation not always be something like Eureka. You don't need to change something radical, but you can change the applications where you want to implement it. So maybe you must have had WhatsApp and all messages. Uh, in three years, they have a nice code that they, they said that will be good to have a use of pencil than use a zero gravity pen, right? Also, uh, in local manufacturing soap box company, they use nice kind of experiment machines to sense whether any soap box has soap inside or not. And one local manufacturer company just use blower fan to use it, right? So this can be such a simple application for invention where we can save money a lot. So it's not always like do, do something radical, but always uh, about novelty of applications. So the term applied, I wanted to stress on uh, at this moment. So, so what we'll do is, I just try to explain you the, some of the concepts of electromagnetics, which I learned while explaining the G employees with no, mathem no mathematics. That may be kind of very uh, simple for you, uh, but maybe I just want to cover that. So, we, so maybe uh, uh, if some, some of the faculty members want to implement it as it is, they can uh, definitely try this. So the, the biggest two hurdles, what I always feel to explain to students is divergence and curl, right? I mean, it's just like mathematics and, and the uh, exact uh, physical meaning of this, can, some kind of missing. So what uh, we uh, do to explain it, just want to try to explain here. So what we'll do is start with divergence and curl, so that's kind of first step will help you to understand how to mathematically uh, mathematically formulate the EM problem for industry, which are the opposite trademarks. I mean, if you pull uh, if you pull the cost out, what, what is the what is its main impact? That will that will cover. And ultimately, I want to showcase four case studies where uh, they are main industrial problems where we solve them for with the help of electromagnetics. Right. So the picture here shows uh, one curve. Oh, I only have say 20 minutes. That works. That's so why I need to cover it. That okay. So divergence. So I have a U-shaped pipe here. You can see input and output as well. If we consider a small rectangular box in in that uh, in the small space there, and ask him first, what is the water stored there, right? Or any change? Or if you if you go back and check the meaning of divergence in dictionary, that is something is diverging from that. So at this moment, whatever is coming in is going out. There is no change, there is no divergence at that, that small volume. So we'll say divergence of water flow is equal to zero. Right? How, how can we implement that? I will see in the next chart. But now, for example, if I have a small leakage of uh, drop by drop, now I cannot say that divergence of that point is equal to zero because Input is not equal to output, right? Now, how can we implement that to magnetics? If we have just, we just replace this and, and just put in the, the path of field lines where north to south poles uh, lines are passing, whatever flux in is flux out, right? So we, we, we can say the divergence of that field quantity 
is equal to zero, that is nothing but del dot b is equal to zero in maths, right? So uh, that is one that is also one of the Maxwell's equation. So similarly, uh, if we go back and see curl, we have a similar example, right? So curl, uh, what I will take is I will take one my bicycle paddle, right? And I I would imagine I have a auction marks and I can go down the uh, that depth and try to see whether this paddle is, the, is now moving or not, right? So the, the meaning of curl in dictionary is something is, curl means something is rotating, right? If it, at, the, at that kind of depth of uh, level, if the input flow and, uh, sorry, I would say the lower and upper flow of water levels are same, there will be incremental motion of the paddle, right? If we can feel that. So I would say rotation of the paddle at that location will be zero, right? So rotation of the paddle, okay, the curl of paddle, is equal to zero. I will put the curl and slowly put it, put, put it on the bed of the water. Now I have the other way around. I have the water level here and there is no water level at the top. Now my paddle will start flowing rapidly. So it, it means that now the curl of paddle is not equal to zero. There is net rotation of that field. How will we implement it? Imagine I have a current carrying bar like this and we have a field. So imagine field is like a water level, so uh, water flows, I, I would say, and take that paddle to the line. As close you are into bar, you will be having more and more rotation. As far, as long as you go uh, far and far, you will not be having any, any rotation, right? And that, that, that curl, we term as a J, so curl dot H is equal to J. So such kind of simple stuff we always uh, use to uh, explain the concept and how to use it in the actual design problem. The third part is force, because all machines, motors work on force, Lorentz force. Lorentz force, uh, that, that's my hand by the way. So uh, if we have a current carrying bar in top direction and we have a field in going in the plane, if you apply flaming left hand rule, we have a force in my uh, thumb direction like this. Now, if I have another opposite current carrying bar, but the field is same, going in, in the same direction, and try to compute the force, it will be in opposite direction. So, there will be kind of repulsive force in between them as you push them near and near. Now, I will, I want to produce this in real life problem, right? I will add one more current bar on top of that, and we'll see how that is the force acting on the uh, horizontal wire, and that is going up. Where we can implement it? Circuit breakers. We have we have a fixed contact. I have a, I have a moving contact. What is to have? It it has a reverse current loop. I one I two. And in between the green, I have an arc. And my objective is to design a circuit breaker such that it will be it will it will push the arc as fast as it can to the arc chutes. Arc chutes. I will show you what is the arc chute is. So our major objective is we need to quench the arc as early as possible. So this is like, like the practical problem we, without that we cannot design circuit breaker, okay? How to maximize this force? Now watch in skin, uh, I think Professor Ramchandran talked about the state that we have to emphasize on skin and I, and I really agree on that point because I remember my BTEC courses of uh, machine design, uh, faculty will come and just take, Assume a uh, copper bar of three millimeter by ten millimeter, but why? Why three millimeter? That why piece I never came to know. We till I uh, understand this part of uh, skin effect, right? Similarly, you have the transformer or machine laminations. Take the say 0.3 millimeter of your laminations, but why 0.3, right? So those those answers are not magic numbers. They come from science, and that is more important for any machine designers to understand what will be uh, the, its dimension. Right now, if you go to the copper industries and ask, must I want to design, a, I want to have a, a winding. So give me the winding of say a 10 by, I would say 10 by 10 or 10 by 20. Like you, it's tough to get because of this, uh, this kind of phenomena. So what it says, I have two conditions uh, solved in front of you. I have this uh, one copper conductor, this is another copper conductor and I pass the DC, RF, DC current and the AC current. And as you all know, the, the impact of AC uh, frequency, AC current as a property of material, that it will distribute the current density only on the skin of the conductor, 
right so that will enhances its uh, its r ac called ac re resistance and increase the loss of, of that so to minimize that we have something called skin depth we only give that a direct equation we don't give them a two by mathematics because of uh, they just want to learn this equation that's it we have pi we have frequency we know mu you know sigma you know now if you try to compute this uh, skin depth of copper at 50 hertz, that will be around 10.6769 millimeter. And for India or, or say UK, for 60 hertz, it will be even lesser, right? So that, that that is the skin depth. And in that skin depth, my J will be reduced by 37%. So the thumb rule is, we will have the copper conductors delta by three, at least delta by three, skin depth by three. So if you have three, you will have approximately three point something millimeter. So even it is, it can, it's kind of better to have a smaller and smaller, but then we have a challenge for mechanical field, mechanical manufacturing challenge it, it has. So the three millimeter come number comes from that to minimize eddy current loss in the windings for any machines and transformers. Similar concept applicable when we have uh, iron, right? Now uh, the same skin depth uh, equation is same for iron as well. It has mu, it has uh, sigma there, right? But now uh, mu, okay, just simple question. What is the mu of uh, copper, <coughs> mu r? Relative permeability of copper, any guess? Yes. Not to faculties, <laughs> students. Anyway, see there, there's always some kind of confusion that it is highly conducting than iron. So we always tend to think that it is also magnetic material, but it's not. Copper is not a non-magnetic material. And when you have a mu that is of iron is huge, when it is sit on a Denominator, your, your delta is just one to two millimeter for this iron material. Now, how eddy current will flow? If I, if I winding current flowing like this, by Lenz's law, eddy current flow actually flow through the stack length of the machine and come back, right? So to break that current, we have to laminate that. And that thickness will be around same, delta by three. So you always see around say, say 0.2 to 0.25, maximum 0.5 millimeter is the actual, Dimension or thickness we use for any machines and uh, or or uh, transformers, right? After this, uh, I, I always have to explain them machines as a, as a principle because those employees may not be having electrical background. They come from thermal, they come from metallurgy, right? So how to how can I leverage whatever I told them now by using simple Fleming left hand rule to analyze the machine as well? So I just take two minutes to explain. So now we understand that in this case, in the, in the earlier chart, we can have a force along this direction. By same principle, if I want to uh, have a torque, not force, right? So I have a center fix, right? I, I want to produce torque. So I have to apply force and one point of the rotor, for example. How to have that force? So first, let's fix the, the, the directions where I want to have force. I want to. I want this rotor in you know, moving in this direction. So accordingly, I will adjust my my left hand. And we'll see where is my current and where is my B. Now my job is to have that B and I in place, right? So what I will do to have the B, right? The best source of B is, is again current. I will have a small slot in the in in, in one kind of stator. Will pass one coil through it right it, it, it will be having its own b so my my one job is done i got b what will be current so i will i will assume that this rotor has current also going in this direction right now i can have force as well so this has own b2 and only in books we will just say that two fields interact and generate torque means what actually we are using framing left left hand rule there Right now, to have more uniform things, we just increase it to multiple slots, multiple bars, and we'll see how. And that is nothing but your induction motor. We, we just name that, that as armature winding and field winding, and your field winding is short circuited for induction motors. And but for synchronous motors, they will be having two independent supplies: one for armature, one for field. That's the only difference, right? Then it will be always tough to. Uh, visualize field which is rotating magnetic field. So now I just have a, I've shown you that we have uniform slots and bars there. 
Now what else happen if I apply the three phase current to the to those those to those bars? The law says is if I have three phase quantities phase shifted in time as well as in space, we will be having rotating magnetic field, right? So let's have it. I mean, I just kept the A1, A1, B1, C1 current and have this rotating magnetic field. So this field is actually rotating means at one time instant your A phase is maximum, you have one pole, then you have B phase maximum, then C phase maximum, again A phase maximum, again B phase maximum. So it's kind of repeating and you will be having a rotating field. Try, right, try to uh, imagine, right, then don't worry about mathematics, main I want to highlight is any industrial, any industrial electromagnetic or not industrial, any electromagnetic problem is governed by one equation that is called this, uh, it's called uh, half 1 by mu del square A, A is called magnetic vector potential, the name itself is so complex that the, I want to explain them was the such field doesn't exist. There is no such thing you can see, you, you can measure that magnetic, magnetic vector potential. It's just a mathematical gimmick. It's just, it just a mathematical number, right? You, we can measure voltage. We cannot measure A. A is used to compute magnetic fields magnetic and, and magnetic equations because as we know, we now we know curl, we know, we know divergence. We want to have a substitute for del dot B is equal to zero we introduce A as A and call it as magnetic vector potential and so that we, we don't violate the mathematics, right? And then the magic is we can fit the wave, wave equation there by with the help of A. So why A? It can compute all things what you want in any industrial or any electromagnetic problems. It can compute flow density, can compute H, compute L, losses, heat, everything, right? Plus linkage as well. And then, uh, then, then, once you have the problem defined, you have to identify boss what I need. Am I interested to have a, a transient waveform in picture, or am I interested just in steady state loss numbers, or do I need to have only DC source? So that examine will, with that examination will give you. You need to solve two days long transient problem for static solutions, or you want to just have a say solve one second problem to get the that equation. So it depends what you want based on that you have to use the solvers accordingly. Static, time harmonic or, or say transient. So that, that that's the next choice and the main thing I want to highlight is uh, in any industry problem you know what is the maximum length of your problem is in meters for example. You compute what is the operating frequency of the problem then you compute its wavelength lambda C by that frequency and if that wavelength and the dimensions of your problem is kind of comparable, you have to use high frequency problem and if it is not, if it is way off, you have to use low frequency problem. So that kind of uh, differentiation we have to do at the early stages. Right, as I was saying, there is, right, there are always, uh, contradictions are always there, right. You, if you want to have readily availability, you have to, you have to sacrifice the, the flexibility. If you want to put output more, you have to have uh, maximum emissions more. So these kind of uh, contradictions also we need to handle in all the problems. And as Dr. Pramanik was saying, it's all multiphysics. You cannot survive without uh, mechanical or uh, other fields. It is it, it's always the other fields that fail you always. I mean, if you are you are in electromagnetics, always uh, something will constrain you, which is mechanical or thermal. From this moment, I will uh, have a four case studies, one is very simple, so this is a new type of transformer, no, not new I would say, but uh, its manufacturing is, is different. So typically what happened is this one transformer and in Z direction going in the plane we have aligners, right. That has optimized design but more labor is, is required. This instrument, uh, this stage core can be formed by only one person, one machine. It, it's called unicore design. We kind of uh, tape bound core, but now the problem is we want to analyze the 2D, two dimensional analysis problem like this. Now you have laminations in x direction, right? Your first assumption that your A is AZ and your BX, BY are same or I would say continuous, 
will not hold good. Your BX direction will, will be having huge amount of uh, mu uh, gaps, I would say, because of this lamination. So how do you solve this in 2D, in 2D, in 2D problems? So uh, there is always something called, yeah. So one more thing I want to highlight. So when we get materials, we always get one BH curve for the material, for one plane of laminations. But when you build a core or any stator or, more, or say transformer, your BH curve will change because I, uh, there's something called stacking factor, right? If I have the 10, 10 millimeter length and I have say 0.2 millimeter of one laminations, I will not always have exact match of 10 millimeter. There will be some kind of fraction that length occupied by ion and actual length of 10 millimeter. That is called stacking factor and that factor will change your BH curve of the build curve, uh, build core and actual lamination score. So just want to plot that blue is the actual core and red is curve is the build curve which we computed after we stacked, stacked, the, stacked the core in one location. But now this will not help. Why? Because I want to have 2D. If I have to have 2D uh, analysis, I have to take uh, un isotropy into account. So your BH curve will change. So now I have to have three BH curves and for 2D, I will use for X direction, I will use the blue BH curve and for Y, I will use the normal green color uh, BH curve to compute losses, right? So when we when we try to match with 2D, 3D and also measured, the error was around 3% and we, and we say, okay, now this technique is better to compute core loss in any transformer. So as long as my error is less than 5%, I am good, okay? Next case study, as I was saying about IPM motor, interior permanent motor. So uh, in machines, the latest trend is going on and on is uh, for the same space, how much maximum torque I can get. It's called maximum high power density machine. If I have say V volume, I should get ideally maximum torque from the, from the machine. So if you change the, you change your machine topology from induction motor to DC motor to PM motor, we observe that your power density of your permanent magnetic motor is more highest as compared to induction motor and, and so on and so forth. So we, uh, what we do is we always have a tool to design this special electric machine called interior permanent magnetic machine. The only drawback here is uh, the cost of magnets, right? Just want to give you one quick uh, more fact that geographically, China has 97% of rare earth stock with them. So if they think they can dominate the rare earth market all over the world, right? 97%. And they are blessed by geography. They, 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 they cannot do that. So the main thing here is uh, the cost of uh, PM is the main challenge here. I uh, just want to give a number. Last time it was it goes to $500 per uh, kg. Cost of PM, it, it kind of showed up that level. Then comes up to, to, to circuit breaker. This is my uh, arc chutes. The arc will come here and will get uh, splitted over the arc chutes. So this also we uh, model. I just want to show some animation. Arc uh, typically we model with CFD and plasma physics and all uh, multiphysics tools. But it compute, it takes more time and we are just interested to have arc voltage and arc current. We, we only want arc current, arc voltage. We are not interested in temperature at this moment. So we simple model arc as a chain of small current carrying elements and they expand as my, as my, uh, as, as my contact opens up, right? And the last, last slide I have on this, uh, I would say the wireless power transfer. So we are working with Mahindra Reva. Uh, to have the wireless power, wireless uh, battery, battery charging pad for them. So we have proved up to 97% of coil to coil efficiency for uh, 70, 70 centimeter of uh, distance. Lastly, uh, as I want to say, uh, there is good amount of response from IIT, IIT Delhi, just want to intimate you. The, I mean, every year number of students opting this course increasing uh, day by day. So that's good sign that they, they are liking the industrial way and industrial uh, problems to be taught in the classes. So just want to see the last thing about which are the top, top, top topics we actually covered. So starting from smart grade to, if you can see these are very mixed topics. You, you, you cannot say it's of one subject, right? Some subjects start from power systems, one so trans, from, from, say uh, transformers or m and or battery, right? So 
depending on G G faculties uh, 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 kind of ready with we change this to topics and we are getting good response from them. I think uh, if I am time time I will open up for any any comments or any questions which I may not be able to answer but this we will we'll try to answer. Sure. Just it will take two minutes to let's say two minutes to uh, end with a nice uh, just, uh, just kind of quote here. Uh, industry main thing uh, happen in group, so you have to do respect the skills of each each other as well. You cannot be well in all the fields, right? So you know the traditional story of uh, rabbit, rabbit and uh, uh, tortoise, right? Tortoise uh, won the race at that time. The rabbit ran fast. He slept and he uh, he, he he lost the battle. Then he said, "Well, this is not right. This is not right. Next round, I will not sleep." So he he didn't sleep and he won the race. That's the second part of it. Third part was the tortoise was very smart. He said, "This time I will define the path, not you." So the, he has the line there and he has a river in between, and he nicely came and just crossed the river and and, and won the race. So I would learn, boss. No, he has some other some other skill. I have some other skill. Let's leverage each other the skills. Let's work in a team. So in next round, <coughs> for the same path, up to the river, right, carried him, and in the river, tortoise carried him. So we have to work in team to win the race in any industrial problem. So thank you. No well, thank the speaker for this nice talk. Thanks.